Okay. Good evening, everyone. Thanks again for being here. And we thank ZJ for handing out the Gemaras. And I thank Rabbi Zions for sharing Divrei Torah with us the last, with the show, the last three nights. Yashar Koach. We're going we're gonna to pick up tonight where we left off with Tamed. Again, our goal is to finish Maseches Tamed in time for the Hanukkah Sabayas. If you're using the front, everyone should have the Gemara. If you're using the front of the Gemara, it'll be page Chavav Amibes on the bottom. Chavav Amibes at the bottom at the two dots. And then it'll go on to Chav Zayin of If you're using the back, the art scroll elucidation, it'll be 26B3 in the back. So again, it's 26B3 in the back. And if you're using the front with the uh, the Hebrew and the Aramaic, it'll be Chavav Amibes at the bottom at the two dots. So let's see. The Mishnah had said, Pirchei Kahuna, when they were referring to the young Kohanim, the youngins, that where they would sleep in the base Hamokad, in that chamber of the fire. So we said that the older Kohanim would sleep on those, on those stone shelves that were protruding from the walls. But we said that the younger Kohanim, the Pirchei Kahuna, they would sleep on the floor in there. They would put their clothes into like a pillowcase and then, and then you know, put their heads down on that. So the Gemara now just picks up uh, and wanting to know why there's a disparity, there's a discrepancy, I should say, in terms of how young Kohanim are called. So the Gemara says as follows, So the Mishnah had said that the young Kohanim who were sleeping in the base of Malkad, they put their big day kahuna because they don't want to sleep in the big day kahuna. They put it into like a pillowcase and then they rested their heads on it and they slept on it. So the Gemara says, Am I awesome, Karlu Rovim? Earlier in the Mishnah, when we spoke about the Kohanim who would be up all night in the honor guard, those three Kohanim would be placed at various points in the base of Mikdash, he used the term Rovim. It almost sounds like archers or something. So it sounds like they used the term Rovim to refer to young Kohanim. And Achakarilu, and over here, they're called Pirche Kohuna. What do we make of this? The fact that they were using different terms to describe young Kohanim. So the Gemara says, Imriyein. So the Gemara says, yeah, you're right. There, there are indeed two different terms because we're talking about two different age groups of young Kohanim. It says, Hasam de Lomatu Avoda. The Kohanim that we called Rovim, the ones at the beginning, the ones who were up all night to do the night guard, the night watch, the honorary watch, those are talking about Kohanim who are not yet bar mitzvah. We needed real young blood who could stay up and be vigorous to be up through the night. So it was Hasam de Lomatu Avoda. We're talking about young Kohanim who weren't even bar mitzvah age. So they were the ones who were going to be up to do the honor guard, the three posts. However, so they're Karelu Rovim. That's who the Mishnah refers to as Rovim. Here we're talking about young Kohanim who are fit to do Avodah. They're already uh, 13 years old and they've got their, their simon and they've got their, they've got their hairs and everything. So now we're talking about guys who are fit to do the Avodah. That's a different stage. The next stage is Karelu Pirchei. They're called Pirchei Kona. Pirchei are like the, the buds, the flowering buds. So that's, a, that's a, you know, everyone's familiar with Aguda Sisral has their youth group. It's called Pirche. That's where the term comes from because the Pirche Kahuna, the young budding, koha, budding Kohanim, that's what it's referring to. Ones who have already begun the Avoda, begun the initiation into the Avoda. All right, let's see a little further. We said in our Mishnah so far that there were three spots where Kohanim would, would uh, um, uh, engage in an honorary night watch. Now we're going to bring down, and we had mentioned this a little bit earlier, that there was also many Levium who were on duty to stand guard as well during the night. Yes, there were three Kohanim stationed, but there were many, over 20 Levium we're about to see now. And that's going to be based on Mishnah and Midos that we're going to quote. So the Gemara now continues. So again, in the back, it's 27A1 on the bottom left. In the front, we're uh, up on top on Chavzayin of Aral. So the Gemara now continues, and it says as follows. Tanan awesome, we learned in a Mishnah and Meseches Midos. The night watch, there was three spots where Kohanim engaged in that honorary night watch. What were they? We saw it, this, this we saw in our mission as well. What were they? The base of Tinas, the Tinas chamber, that was where they made the Ketaras. And then there was base of Nitzos, the chambers of the Ray, that was where they would see the spot the, uh, that the dawn had broke. And then we said base of Mokad, and there was also at the hall of the, the, the chamber with the fire. Those are the three, three spots where Kohanim performed the honorary night watch. But now there were Levim, in addition to those Kohanim, the Esrim Vechad Makomos, there was 21 spots where the Levim were stationed to, uh, to, to stand guard. Now, if you're using the art scroll in the back and 27A2, you'll see there's a really well done map that actually charts out exactly where these Kohanim and the Levim were. So if you look at that map for a second, so the Kohanim, you see how they indicated Kohanim are totally black and the Levi has a white face. 
So you see where the three Kohanim are. Spot number 10, that's the Shar HaNitzutz, the gate of the Ray. And then there's spot number six, that's the Beis HaMoka, that's the house of the, or the chamber of the flame. And then the other one was 15, you see it was the chamber of Avtinas, that was where they made the Kedoras. All the others are going to be Levium. Just so you understand this picture, the Beis HaMikdash is in the middle, everything within that wall is the Chatzar, and then the larger box is the Harabayas. So let's see, now the Mishnah and Midos we're going to be quoting is where were the Levium on duty? So the Mishnah says as follows, it says, I lost this one, the Levium at 21 spots where there was going to be honorary night guards with the Levium uh, through the night. What were they? Hamisha al Hamisha Shari Harabayas. There was five Levium. First of all, the first five were at the five entrances to Harabayas. So the Harabayas, meaning the entire Temple Mount. So if you look at that on this map here, that'll be one and one. That's at the, that's at the, uh, at the uh, south. So one and one, those are called the Hulda gates. Two is to the east, that was the eastern gate. Three is up north, that was called the Tadi gate. Uh, Mido says why it was named that. And gate number four, which is on the west, that was called the Kiponos gate. Again, the Gemara Midos talks, Mishnah Midos talks about that. Those were the, the five gates where there was Levium on duty throughout the night. Now it says those are the first five. We're going to get to 21. So it says Arba al Arba Pinosav. So then there was Mibifnim, and then there was four more Levium at each corner, meaning you look at the Harabais corners, there's one in each corner, Mibifnim, meaning on the inside. They were inside Harabais, not outside. So inside at those corners, in those interior corners, there was another four Levium that gets us up to nine. Now it says Hamisha, um, uh, I'm sorry, uh, I just did that. It says uh, Arba, Arba Pinosav, um, I'm sorry, Hamisha, uh, Hamisha Shari Azara. Then there was five Levium at the five gates. Uh, at the at the courtyard. So what were the five gates of the courtyard? So if you look in the in the again the art scroll here, start with the with the east would be number five. So five that's the Niknor gate. That's going from the Ezra Snashim into the Ezra Kohanim there. That's one gate going into the Azara. The next one's going to be 14 and 12. 14 and 12 that was the Sharamaim, that was the water gate. 12 was called the uh, the the, the uh, Shara Aisha, I believe it's called you'll see how that's referred to. And then you're also going to see that in uh, number 10 and number uh, seven. So let's get to those. So the Mishnah says again, there was five, the Shari Azara, five going into the courtyard. And then it says Arba, Arba, Pinosov. And then in the courtyard, there was all, there was another four, and those were Mibachutz on the outside. So if you look, those four that were standing on a guard for the Azara, they're not in the actual Azara. So if you look at the northwest corner, the lady's on the outside. At the southwest, he's at the outside. At the northeast and the southeast, he's on the outside in the Ezra Snashim there. So those are another four, and those are Mibachutz. Those were outside the Azara. Echad Belishka Sakarban. Then you had one that was at the chamber of the offering. It's not 100% clear where that was. And this one, the depiction is that's number eight. That was one of the rooms in the Beis Hamokad was called the, was called the Lishka Sakarban. They always kept some perfectly tmimim, a tmimim stick. Uh, um, sheep in there, so they never had to worry with the carbon tumid in the morning to get going with the with the carbonos. They always had some sheep at the ready in there. And then it says uh, and there was another that was standing in what was called the gate, the chamber of the parochas. That was where they would actually weave and make parochases. The Mepharshim said they're not 100% clear where this was in the Beis Hamikdash. It may not be identified too often. So they, 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 that's why they have it there 16 with the uh, dots around it. That's just an estimation. They think it was outside the Azara on Harabayas, but they're not 100% uh, certain. Misha continues, Echad Achari Beis HaParochas. And there was one behind the chamber of the Parochas, meaning if you look at the diagram there, uh, the Kodesh HaKdashim, so behind the Kodesh HaKdashim, in the west of the Kodesh HaKdashim, there was one lady who stood in the back there. No one else went back there. So he was back there. So now, what? So again, he's outside the base of Mikdash, but he still is in the Azara. So that seems like there was one spot there that there was Levia Mangard. Yeah. It could be it's a discussion. I, I remember when we learned Midos, something of this nature came up. Yeah, but that's uh that's the uh yeah, that's there's there's ta'im, there's these chambers and stuff. Yeah. Uh, I think I think there's discussion about it. I think if you look in footnote number twelve, 
I think, I'm sorry, 13. 13 in the second paragraph, I think they, they get into that there. And Pashtus, is that, that's where that lady was, but it, it could be a bit more complex. So let's see. So now the Gemara says, where is this all derived from? And what Pasuk is there in Tanakh that might give us indication that all these Levium need to be on station throughout the night in the Beis HaMikdash? So they quote a Pasuk in Devrei Yaman. Amar Rav Yehuda Misura. Rav Yehuda Misura quotes this Pasuk from Devrei Yaman. The Masni Satana and others say it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't from him. Rather, it was from a Brisa. The Chesim, it was written. It says, L'Mizrach HaLavim Shisha. On the eastern side, there was going to be six. Now the Mepar Shemal say the count, how they get six on the east. I, I just, for interest of time, I'm not gonna go through all that, but we, again, you have a very, we have a very good map here showing placements. So it says here, on the, there was six on the east, but Safon Layom, meaning north and facing the sun, there was Arba, there was four. Lenegba Layom, the south facing the sun, there was also Arba, there was four. La Sufim Shnaim Shnaim, but La Sufim, it's not defined yet, the Gemara will define. There was two and two. La Parbar, La Marav, and a Parbar, the Gemara will talk about what that means. To the west, Arba, there was four, La Mesila at the end, Shnaim La Parbar, and two at the Parbar. That's, that's, this is the Apasuk and Divrei Ayamim that's used. So now the Gemara asks, again, if you're using the back of the art scroll, it'll be 2783. So the Gemara asked, one second, Amri Hani Esrim Varbahavu. If you look at that Pasuk, you do a literal reading of that Pasuk, those numbers add up to 24. And the Mishnah and Mido said there's supposed to be 21 Kohanim, uh, 21 Leviyam on duty. So where'd you get 21? If you read the, all the numbers in those Sukkim and you add it up, it'll get you 24. So Amr Abaye, Abaye says, I have a way to knock off two. Haki Kamar, that's what, when the Pasuk says, La Supim, Shnayim, Shnayim, when it comes to the asupim, there were two. What it really means is la asupim shnaim. For the two asupim shnaim, there was two. Meaning, so it doesn't mean two and two, two guards and then another two guards. There were two asupim and then there were two guards. Okay, so that brings us down to twenty-two, but that's still not twenty-one. That's what the Gemara says. Akati yasu nutreyavi. That brings you down to abaye knocked off two. That gets you to twenty-two, but we need twenty-one. So hech the parbar chada. So the Gemara answers at the end the parbar. The guard at the parbar really was only one guard. And another levy would go with him and keep him company so he shouldn't feel alone, but it was really only considered one. Even though there was a second levy, since he was standing together with them, that's not considered a second levy at a second station because they're at one station, two of them at one station. Why was the reason he kept them company? Because he was standing outside. He was all by himself outside. Who was that? So if go back to that map. This is the one that Rabbi Zions was bringing, the one who was west of the of the Kodesh Hakdashim. That's what they're referring to, the Parbar guard. So he, there was another levy to keep him uh, company there, but it wasn't counted as a second guard because it was one station. Just talking about how many stations, not how many guards. Mishnah ends my Parbar. I'm sorry, the Gemara concludes that discussion by saying my Parbar. Why do we call that a Parbar? So Rabbi of Amar, Rabbi of Arshila, Amar, Klapi Bar. It's like he's saying he was facing outside. He was facing there. Nobody walked there. Jeroy Zions was alluding to, nobody was allowed to walk behind the Kodesh Akdashim section. So this fellow was all by himself. He couldn't even have eye contact with anybody. So they positioned another lady with him to keep him company. Let's just see a little bit further. It says, here's another answer. The Gemara says, I, if you add up the guards in the Pesukim, it gets you 24. And our mission says there's only supposed to be 21. How do we do this? Really, there are supposed to be 24 guards, just like the Pesuk says. However, three of them really are Kohanim. Every Kohen is also a Levi, because they're from Sheva Levi. So that's what he's saying here. So it really was 24. But three of them are Kohanim. So, and we know there's three Kohanim who are on duty. That's the total of 24. It's less than the Kohanim. That's from the Chad Leviyim, and 21 are Leviyim. But one second, how do you pull that trick? The, the Pasuk specifically says we're counting Leviyim, not Kohanim. Gemara says, Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi, Dom Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi, that's from Varba Makomos Nikru, Kohanim Leviyim. There's 24 places in Tanakh where Kohanim are referred to as Leviyim. Zechabim, this is one of them. Kohanim Leviyim, Breit Sadok. And there's another one. It says the Kohan and Levim of uh, our, our B'nai Tzadok. They're all uh, children of Tzadok who was a Kohen. So what do we see? That even a Kohen could sometimes be referred to as a as a Levi. That's how he does it. So he says, yeah, there are 24. And really, exactly what the Pasuk says. But what do you mean? Well, we're supposed to have 21 Levim. Yes, yeah, 24 Levim, but under the umbrella of Levi are also three Kohanim. And as the Mishnah said, there was three Kohanim 
we're also on duty. That's how you can square that all away. All right, we'll hold it here. So this is at the two dots, <coughs> the middle of the page, Chavzayin, the Daf Chavzayin, Amad Aleph. And again, in the in the back, it'll be uh, at 2783 in the middle there. All right, well, Paul, we'll stop for the night. We'll continue, God willing, next week. Say, Kaddish Rabbanon. Kaddish Rabbanon.